What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you an update about Baldur's Gate 3 and its first year in Early Access, because of course Baldur's Gate 3 launched in Early Access this time last year, specifically October 6th, so we are a couple of days early, but nonetheless, here we are. Now the point of this video is to go over some of the larger changes that have come to Early Access, kind of talk about those systems, and then I'm going to give some opinions at the end. Now I will say at the start of this video, across the past year there have been fixes and changes galore, which would be incredibly difficult to mention in great depth, but I assure you there have been like literally thousands of bug fixes, crash fixes, just tons of stuff like that. So with it being early access, that is obviously one of the big points of doing it. So we're not going to cover like every hot fix that happened, but let's talk about the major patches. So far there have been five. Patches one and two came pretty quickly, and they both focused on basically the same things. That is enhancing the tutorial, kind of making the tutorial make more sense, having messages pop up at like the best time, that type of stuff. They tweaked a lot of the dialogue between your companions making some of the stuff they say make more sense as people progress through Act 1. As uh, when the Early Access first launched, the uh, dialogue was all over the place. They since refined that a bit. They also greatly refined the cinematics, which was a process that has continued on since then. That's kind of a work in progress just across Early Access, but it started all the way back then. As I mentioned, Patch 2 was basically the same stuff as Patch 1 with uh, different fixes, of course, but a lot of focus on the same type of stuff. And then we got Patch 3. Patch 3 was really all about balancing some stuff. They tuned cantrips down, they increased your regular spells that actually took up spell slots up a little bit, they made tons of changes to the AI, and they balanced at least Act 1 out quite a bit in response to player feedback. This is also the patch that added flyout spell menus, which was super important to me personally, because prior to this, you had to have each level of a spell on your hotbar, which was a mess. Patch 3 also added pacifism rewards, that is to say they would reward you for avoiding combat as well as partaking in it, which is honestly a big step up from Divinity Original Sin 2, where really the reward for skipping encounters was nothing. And then we got Patch 4. Patch 4, of course, brought our new class, new to the Early Access, obviously not new to D&D, the Druid. So that, of course, brought all the Druid powers in, like Wild Shape and things that they had to account for. This is also the patch that added the Loaded Dice option, which is completely optional, but it basically smooths out rolls on the high and low end, which will keep you from unfortunate strings of bad luck and too much good luck, so it kind of just smooths out some of the randomness to the dice system. And then last but not least for our major patches, we had patch 5. Patch 5 was actually really big, but the big things were the active roll system, which allows your characters and your companions to cast the appropriate spells to influence a roll while you're rolling for it on screen, which I thought was really cool actually. And then they also added the background inspiration point system, which is to say that they would basically reward you for playing to your character's chosen background through inspiration points. Inspiration points can be spent to give your character advantage on a roll, or if you already are full on inspiration points, it gives you a small bit of experience instead. Patch 5 also added the, generally speaking, slightly controversial camp resources. That is to say you had to have enough food and things to rest properly, which helped put a limit on the otherwise limitless rest system. That patch also added uh, non-lethal combat, which you could toggle off as well. And while this isn't meant to be a completely conclusive list, that is a summary of the largest changes that have come to BG3. Now, I do want to emphasize again, there have been tons of small changes that are hard to sum up, but have made the game feel a lot better. Again, dialogues being tweaked, being able to free Shadowheart from the Nautiloid at the beginning instead of having to just find her later after she got free on her own, for instance. Lots of things that definitely change the way the game feels, which aren't exactly game-changing, but are nonetheless important. Now, to give some opinions here. All of the progress that they have made is very positive, but I will say it has come out at a very slow rate. Because while patches 1 and 2 happened pretty quickly after launch, actually, patches 1 and 2 came out basically by the end of November when Early Access launched in October. And since then, we've really only seen three patches. We were supposed to see patch 6 relatively quickly, they said, after patch 5. However, patch 5 came out about two months ago, and we still have yet to hear anything about patch 6. They might be saving that for the actual anniversary date here in a couple days. Maybe. Who knows? Now, I will say this. I would rather them take a slow pace and do this game right than do it badly. Because badly, 
would be catastrophic for them because of what Baldur's Gate means to so many people. Now, I have actually played Baldur's Gate 1, Baldur's Gate 2, literally every game Larian has ever made on top of the Baldur's Gate series as well. And while truthfully, I don't think there is anything Larian could possibly do that would please everyone given just the history of the franchise, I think overall the state of early access and the direction they are headed is very positive, albeit slow. Personally, I would really love to see the races and the classes that are still in the player's handbook that have not been added to early access yet, which are supposed to be coming at some point, actually get added, because I would love to see a Dragonborn in Baldur's Gate 3, and they are in the player's handbook, which Larian has previously committed to adding, which hopefully doesn't change, but again, would love to see that. There you go, guys. Honestly, just to sum this up pretty succinctly, progress on this game and early access is frankly a little slower than I would like to see. But overall, the changes are very positive and the game is shaping up nicely, just at a very slow pace, frankly. But again, I would rather it be slow and good than them release anything that is poorly done because again with this franchise being what it is i just don't think that would end well for them but there you go guys a quick summary of Baldur's gate 3's first year in early access i hope you enjoyed it if you did like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz but regardless of any of that truly thank you so much for watching may you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day <laughs>